Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to come into Chaturanga Dandasana. So I noticed from teaching that there is a tendency to drop the heart towards the mat and create this lift of the hips, which creates an incredible amount of strain on the wrists, the shoulders and the low back. So we'll begin by coming onto our hands and knees. And once you're on your hands and knees, what I'd like you to do is just drop down towards the floor and then just bring yourself back up. And as you're doing that, notice if your elbows come out to the side, even if ever so slightly, and try to be thinking about drawing your shoulder blades towards each other and then starting to bend down and having the elbows facing back. Now, when you come into Chaturanga Dandasana, if you allow your heart to drop first, and then you allow for your hips to lift up, as you come down, you're gonna notice it's quite uncomfortable, requires a considerable amount of energy. And again, as I mentioned, it will strain your wrist, your shoulders, and your low back. So bring your feet back and come into your plank pose. And if you find that this doesn't feel comfortable for you, and just simply bring your knees down. Here though, try to press into the heels of your hand and puff up into that space between your shoulder blades. So notice if you're dropping and there's a collapsing between or if you're pressing up into that space. Another thing to be aware of is if you're letting your hips start to drop towards the mat. So when the core is weak, there's a tendency for this collapse. So think here about drawing the navel in towards the spine and practicing from this place. Otherwise, with your knees lifted up away from the mat, same thing, try to draw the navel in towards the spine and really push out through your back heels as you're pressing the heels of your hands onto the mat. Now, first I'm gonna show you what I tend to see in this asana. So two things, one is again, the elbows coming out to the side in which case there's gonna be a complete collapsing in the upper back, and that's going to feel extremely challenging to move into. The other is from here, is to let the heart start to drop and to lift the hips. Now, if you do this, what's gonna happen is, as you try to pull forward, you're gonna drop down, have to push into your hands, lift back up, and then come back. There's no need to use that much energy. Instead, you wanna focus on strength. Strength of the arms, strength of the shoulders, and the core strength. So it would be preferable, if that's what's happening for you in this asana, to instead be thinking about drawing the navel in towards the spine, finding a length, pushing into the heels of the hands, and then starting to bend the elbows and come back up and build that arm strength, the shoulder strength, initially. Then what you can start to do is as you come down, keep the toes tucked, lift the knees, untuck the toes, and pull the heart forward into your upward facing dog. Then you wanna roll on your toes and come back to your downward facing dog. So from here, you can also practice this rolling onto the toes back and forth. So here from your plank, you can think about coming forward and coming back and coming forward and coming back and just playing with that. Now, if you're gonna come into Chaturanga Dandasana from your plank pose, again, watch with the heart. Think of a plank of wood and it's drawing forward rather than down. So from here, in your plank, draw the navel in towards the spine, push the heels of the hands into the mat, hop up into that space between the shoulder blades and really push out through your heels. Now as you bend your elbows, fold forward, untuck your toes, keep your legs lifted up away from the mat, roll back and into your downward facing dog. So just as you did with having the elbows bent and the knees down, starting to build that strength in the arms and the shoulders, you can do this from your plank as well. So from here, draw again the navel in towards the spine, hop up, come down, come up, 
Come back to your downward facing dog. And then just continue to practice that. Coming down, lifting up, and back to your downward facing dog. When you come into your upward facing dog position, try to think of bringing the shoulder blades towards each other and guiding the heart forward and through the arms. So rather than just coming down and then untucking and pushing into the hand, think instead from this place, you're bending the elbows, pulling the heart forward and through the arms, and then coming back to your downward facing dog. So I hope this tutorial helps you with your Chaturanga Dandasana. Let me know, we'll leave a message if you have any questions or any comments. The light within me honors the light within you. Namaste.